See, the thing that gets me is I'm a Christian, and I've been going to church for a long, long time. I'm not saying that makes you perfect or nothing. But isn't there a way to administer what you believe? It, not everything in the Bible is to be taken literal. Almost nothing is to be taken literal. It's all symbolic of something else. Was it symbolic when Jesus rose from the dead, or was it literal? No, that was literal. But it was symbolic of how he freed from Satan and how we are not bound to sin anymore. That's what you're that telling was the them. Symbolic. That's the message that they don't have to sin anymore. They can live holy. Matter of fact, they're going to have to if they but you, if they you can't that. sin in life because if you say you're not a sinner, then you're a liar and the truth is not in you. No, it, this quote correctly is it says if we say we have not sinned, we make That's God right, a, liar. a sinner. Well, we have sin, but that doesn't mean we continue. But in order to tell, in order to give these people, you know, they all, in order to, I guess, make them aware of the fact that they have sin, is it necessary to scream? Is the problem? Well, we don't. Well, you call it screaming. We call it preaching at the top of our voice in order to be heard. How many people do you? And think I think I notice you're raising your voice to right. me right now, exactly. even though there's just two of it. Because, because you're I'm excited. Very disturbed about, well, I'm she's not disturbed. Excited. I'm disturbed. Well, she's disturbed. That's why she raises her voice. But the question, so it's all right for you to raise your voice because you're disturbed, but it's not all right for her to raise her voice because she's disturbed. No, she should be prepared for something like this. I came on it totally in a gasp that I knew nothing of this was happening. I'd heard the reputation. Jesus got that, disturbed and, and he raised his voice. I'm not saying he didn't. Everyone can raise their voice. I'm okay. not saying that. Well, what are you but objecting to? Don't you think to? that there are different approaches that can be taken? Exactly yes, there are different point. approaches that can be taken, but you don't like, you don't seem to uh, think we can take ours. No, 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 no. It's not right for me to judge. Judge not, lest ye be judged. And that is what I'm in. I'm just offering a different angle of advice and a view. I'm not judging. I'm going to say it disturbs me by far, because I'd be lying if I didn't. But I just. In my personal opinion, I think there are other ways that the word can be administered in a more proper way than um, saying the word of God in your view and having it mocked at exactly. more that than listened exactly to. Exactly. Well, I don't uh, deny there are other ways. Right. But Paul warned us that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them to believe. Paul said that the world would regard our preaching as foolishness. Uh, people mocked and ridiculed was Je when Jesus was hanging on the cross. So we don't allow the crowd or the crowd's reaction to determine our approach. I think by, by changing your approach, you could you could lessen the mockery. I think. Well, we don't, yes, we could uh, lessen the mockery, no doubt about it. And I think by lessening the Come listen mockery, to Cliff Connectly tomorrow. Uh, Jesus, Jesus by. Uh, by by Jesus Jesus by uh, 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 turning uh, uh, could have by stepping down from the cross uh, people would have stopped mocking him. Well, you know, just because uh, I'm glad there'll be no mockery, but uh, I mean there will be some mockery. Oh, there will be. Weren't the people mocking? Disregard for respect. I mean, you're not going to get this blatant. Yeah, I'll tell you. I think I, one reason may be. Uh, because uh, be a major stars. portion of the crowd will be made up of believers because uh, he's going to have all the believers out there and then people will be, the mockers will be intimidated by the large percentage of believers. No, I think, I think maybe perhaps it has to do with the way your presentations are made. I think maybe I'm losing my mind. Yes, because it, I, don't, I don't question that because it's presented with authority and people mock Jesus. The apostles were regularly mocked and ridiculed they because they told people what they did not want to hear. So we don't, uh, we could very easily discourage mockery by, by watering down our message a little. I don't think it's actually watered down. I think no. it starts with a bit Where of... God the, is, God is. That's all there is to uh, it. The presentations I've seen, they, they start with, well, you were starting with the story, and first started with telling us how evil we are. And, uh... You know, the reason for that is because until people see they're evil and are willing to change, they don't even qualify to be saved. But do you have the spirit of discerning? Could, well, see, that's I'm, the thing, to admit that they're, they're admitting to their sins. I don't need uh, the, the spirit of discernment to, to tell that they're sinners. They admit that. But isn't there a fine line between a stumbling block and trying to grow as a Christian and a sinner? And if it is portrayed that you're a sinner because you do this, I'll tell you right now, I'm not perfect, and I don't believe any human can be. Well, Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven that's is That's right. Perfect. But if you're perfect like that and sinless then that is impossible because that's right there is contradicting the Well, then the Jesus Bible. commanded the impossible and make us make him unreasonable. No, he did not. We can do everything he told us to well, do. Well, he said be perfect. That's right, but that means when you're perfect, 
that you're going to listen to him and you're going to do what he wants to do, but you're not Thank always you. Going. So that's why we believe uh, God has uh, directed us out here. So should we listen to you guys or listen to no, him? No. I was telling you that the very first statement I came up. I said there are different ways to administer, but also you've got to test it with the word and by the fruits. And and a vast, vast majority, most of all of this is being done by mockery. I would agree. You were, you were, you, and they, they consistently mocked when the preachers of the Bible preached. So that affirms uh, that Scripture. That does not mean they sit there and, and call and it. Now, we don't, we, don't, we don't judge by whether or not we get converts. Because if so, then uh, Noah wasn't too successful. And then and you're neither starting to get lazy. Jesus, really. But that doesn't mean you have to prove that you're doing a good job by all the criticism you get or by all the mockery. I That's have a hard test. time believing that the apostles were sitting there and they were made fun of. And Read the book of the, Acts. I've read the well, New Well, they were consistently mocked and ridiculed and but was made it fun of. The, Jesus was made fun of but when he was, was hanging on the cross. they were mocked because they didn't believe he was the son of God. Not what he was preaching. What he was preaching, everyone thought was hunky-dory and no big deal. You know, I think a lot of people listen to what he said. Some people listen to And the mockery listen. that happened is... They sit there and said, you're the son of God, then why are you dying on a cross? If this God is so powerful and you're his son, then he shouldn't die. They were thinking a different way than what God had planned out. And they were mocking Christ for that. They were not mocking him. They were in certain extents what he was saying, but not everything. Well, was because those was... were wise. They, they heard and they listened. They took it into action. But I just think there are two different kinds of mockery. The kind that... You claim something and it cannot be proved. It can only be accepted by faith. And the mockery, as we see out here present, because this mockery here, many, many people, and I can tell you almost from my own experience, are sitting here laughing this off. That's and, right. I think, I think and being saved is not a laughing matter. I think they're, I think they're being they pushed. laugh Jesus off too. I think they're being pushed in the opposite direction that you'd like to. Right. Most of them are being turned off. You know, Jesus said, the world cannot hate you, but me it hates because I testify of it that its works are evil. And when you begin to tell people their lives are evil, they're not going to appreciate it. They're going to hate you for it, just as they did Jesus. But do you have the right to tell people their lives are evil? Sure. It's my Judge. responsibility as a minister. I think, I think. Men have always rejected and mocked. Why did they the criticize people? I've Pardon? Brother Max, I've seen your wife. Why did they cut us down? Why did they cut these people because down? Because until you, until uh, people see how low they are and how wicked they are and that they deserve hell, Jesus they don't even qualify to be saved. Jesus called people vipers, hypocrites, right. white and bold tombs. His first public message was repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But even if we That's don't say it. Well, I think hey, Jesus uh, referred to a Gentile woman as a dog. He turned to his uh, disciple Peter and said, get thee behind me, uh, Satan. So he did put people down. But even if you're forgiven of sin does not mean you're higher than anyone else. You're well, still in the same low place, and you've got no, to realize... No, the, the Christian who's forgiven of his sin is in God's kingdom. And, and Jesus, Je Jesus, sure, you're born into God's kingdom. You must, you, you get into co God's kingdom now in this lifetime, or you're never going to get into it. Just, mm, just because I'm not, just because I'm a Christian does not mean I'm better than Jesus some Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. He was talking about the believer. That's right. It's in the heart and in the mind what you think. I, I believe to a very certain extent to each his own. Well, that's not the biblical message to each his Why own. Why not? Because we don't know what sins or what. If you say that, for the example, that um, speaking, you know, the evil comes through the mouth and you'll start speaking this, Satan, it'll go through the stomach and be digested. There is really no difference in saying, ouch, and damn, I hurt my finger. It is the exact same thing, and there is no difference. That's in my eyes. Now, to my father, at the age of 11, it would have seemed to be in a difference to him. But to me, it was not. Because you're still saying something because you got hit in the hand. You're still saying something. And we, as a society, have labeled, damn, shit, all these cuss words that they are evil and horrible and bad. And that, it's... There are, to each his own, guidelines. Some believe it's okay to smoke and be a Christian. Others don't. And that is fine. That the Bible is just says, fine. let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth. What's that mean? Put it in English terms. 
See, maybe if you put some of the stuff in English oh, terms. I didn't, what do you think that was, Latin or French? No, or I think it's in a very complicated, confusing way. You mean where use people... obscene slang words like but what's that's obscene? a bunch of bull? What's, a, what's obscene, though, really? If you stop and think about it. What would what is what constitutes obscene? It's not what Webster says in the dictionary that's obscene. Christ was way before Webster even thought about writing. It's just to each his own to a very certain extent. I I believe. And when when you're pointing your finger at someone, three are pointing right back at you. And it and if you don't watch out, you're really gonna get messed up. Because if you point and say you're a sinner, see, Christ had the authority because he was the son of God and he was God. He had the authority. Well, Paul said, preach the word, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And that's something most ministers won't do today. We come to this campus and violate the last taboo. The last taboo is for the individual to get it out in front of the crowd and say, what you're doing is wrong and it condemns you and it's wicked. Now, now just... some Christians will be bold enough to get up and say, hey, I can show you a better way, but rarely will they say the way you're living now condemns you. Some that's are led what... that way. Some well, are the led... Bible says preach the word, refer, Ma Mother Mary. Rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But see, I cannot picture Mother Mary sitting there rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I cannot picture. Maybe it's stereotypical. I don't know. But there are just some people that are told to have a spirit of boldness and others are not. Others, you can minister to a ton of people and never know it. If you were just a cook in a restaurant, just the way you live should be enough to prove to people that you've got Christ in you. And if they want to figure it out, it's like, what does that person have that I don't have? I'm missing something that they've got joy in. What is it? Then they go up and they ask. And I, I have no authority, and I believe this until the day I die, that I can go out there and say, you're sinning because you do this. You're sinning because you do that. That's between that person and God, not me. Because I am not God, and I don't have the wisdom of God. Well, certainly uh, God's messengers in the Bible did that. Did what? Told people they were sinning and what they were doing wrong. But, but in what you know, way were they Bible doing The Bible says, preach the word, but, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering if someone's and doing, If someone's doing wrong, you're supposed to go to them in private and first, aren't you? I think, Isn't I think, that what uh, the Bible says? I mean, it's there, just, that's, that applies. See, I'm a, I'm a 19 year I'm That an applies to people within the church who profess to be believers. Then, if they're believers, they wouldn't be sinning. They shouldn't be, and believers could sin. Okay, then, then, if a believer can sin, then you wouldn't be perfect as God. As which we are called to well, be. Well, he ceases being perfect at the point he sins, and so you you uh, you urge him to repent. But how can you obtain perfection on this life? Well, it's a purity of heart. You just love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself. That's all God requires of you. But you can't get out of the sin of this world. You cannot, because the world is here, and you cannot totally execute yourself from it. Well, the, uh, it's it's being controlled by the world. That, being controlled uh, by sin. That, that is the sin, not being in the world. Jesus said you're still in it, but you're no longer of it. Right. So we're not to be of the world. We're not to partake of their sins. The sin. but, but we can still be in it. Uh, certainly Jesus uh, did not sin at all. Would you name one commandment of God that would be impossible for you to habitually keep? To be perfect my rest of life from right now on. Why is that impossible? Because I don't think we can be perfect. You, let me ask you this. Do you think you could be perfect for a day? I know that. Then why can you do it for, if you're perfect for a minute, you can be perfect for an hour, for a day, a year. Right. That's just like telling a smoker, if you can't smoke for a minute, can you not smoke for a day for right. it? And some do it. Some quit smoking. Never have another one. I think that's possible. I think it is possible to live by the Ten Commandments. 